What is happening with the LCX token? The token by the centralized exchange, the Liechtenstein Crypto Assets Exchange. Why is it going up that much? Who's buying here? Who's selling here? Let's have a look at the on-chain metrics most people are not considering. So we are currently at 32 cents. We are up 29% today, 204% this week and almost 350% this year. And the whole idea of LCX is that it's properly regulated, that it's in the European Union and that it's in Liechtenstein, right? A place where all the capital in Europe is. Ironically though, the LCX token is not mainly traded on the LCX exchange. It's mainly traded on Coinbase. So 72% of all spot trading volume happens on Coinbase and there are no perpetual futures for the token. So no manipulation via derivative contracts. A quick look at the socials before we have a look at the on-chain metrics we've got 107,000 followers on twitter 12,000 members in telegram and 90,000 followers on chain and that compares with 29,000 holders on the ethereum blockchain so we do have some data to work with of course not all of those 29,000 holders are created equally some of them have a few cents of the token others have hundreds of thousands of dollars of the token we're going to look at this in a second and so we are seeing how there's a lot of small buyers today so there's 62 buyers versus only 38 percent and sellers the buying volume though is only 53% versus 47% so the sellers tend to move more money than the buyers do at least on average per account and so with that price ready we do see a lot of new wallets suddenly interacting with the token so we see the number of new wallets per day on the left and on the right we see this normalized to 100% versus the returning users and we can ignore the latest data point because today isn't yet over we might see a new all-time high who knows but we definitely see how over the last month there's more and more new users relatively speaking coming in so this is positive momentum this is exactly what we want to see when we zoom out a little right since the token started trading in march of 2019 we can clearly see how the token gets sometimes these waves of attention and very often exactly those kinds of attention waves correlate with price movements as well so this on the left side is not the trading volume it's simply the number of wallets the number of buyers and sellers over time on the right side, again, we can see this normalized to 100% per day. No clear long-term trend is observable. And so here is, I think, what a lot of people do wrong in crypto. When you start out in crypto, you simply just look at US dollar prices. You're figuring out, is it currently going up or down? How much longer could the really last? The problem though is when we buy an altcoin, we want to get outperformance versus, for example, just holding Bitcoin, right? When we buy Bitcoin, we've got the safest of the crypto assets. When we buy something like a centralized exchange token, we have more risk and that risk should get compensated with more return long term. Because we all know what potentially can happen with centralized exchange tokens right there was the ftt token by the exchange ftx which pretty much went to zero when the customer funds were lost i'm not saying that the same will happen for lcx i'm simply just saying that this is in general a risk with all centralized exchange tokens and that risk should get compensated and so what we've got over here is lcx divided by the bitcoin price so the relative performance of lcx relative to bitcoin and since the end of 2019 to today we we have seen an outperformance of more than 6,000%. Most of that outperformance happened though directly after launch. So in the last four years, we didn't see that much outperformance. And we do see somewhat of a trading range. We are not yet at the top end of that trading range. Versus Bitcoin, we could potentially still go up by 115% roughly it's very interesting how those tops align right this seems to be some kind of self-fulfilling prophecy especially on relative valuation charts we very often see how tops align how bottoms align how capital is simply just flowing from token to token and it's going there where currently the attention is and then the attention moves to another token right so we see those swings relatively constantly across all those kinds of relative valuation charts now i don't just want to talk about lcx i also want to share a little bit of a nugget in case you don't yet know how to plot those charts when you go to tradingview.com you can click here at the top left and instead of just entering lcx usd you can also enter forward slash and then for example enter btc usd so then you get the relative valuation of in this case the lcx token relative to btc this also works for other tokens right you could go with lcx relative to eth usd or you can go with lcx relative to the ftt token right you can have a look at all of those kinds of relative variation charts to get a feeling of where currently the flows of capital are moving 
And so let's have a look at the on-chain metrics in terms of the number of holders for the retail investor and for the whale investor. And the way we make this differentiation is with minimum holding thresholds. So the problem with this number over here, right, the 29,000 holders is again that there are some wallets in there that just have a few cents of the token. They don't really matter. But with those minimum holding thresholds, we do have the wallets that actually matter. So on the left side, we've got the number of wallets that have at least 3,000 LCX tokens. So at the current price, that's roughly 1,000 thousand dollars worth of the token that's what i consider retail there's roughly ten thousand such wallets so a third of the holders on chain have more than a thousand dollars worth of the token for the chart in the middle we go at 10x in minimum holding so that's now thirty thousand tokens there's only two thousand two hundred such wallets and then on the right another 10x so that's now three hundred thousand tokens or one hundred thousand dollars worth of the token it's very interesting how we see those waves and how we see the constant accumulation but it's also interesting how the number of waves investors actually is going down since november of 2021 so it's kind of like the whales are dumping on retail again since november 2021 for, for the last three years so since this point over here so there was continued accumulation by retail but the whales started dumping since that point that's why lcx wasn't able to outperform bitcoin so here's november of 2021 since then the number of retail investors roughly doubled and so this gives us already a pretty good clue what to do very long term right lcx might be a good trading opportunity short term but for holding it over many many years it's probably not the very best vehicle because we don't anymore get the risk compensated because the whales are dumping pretty constantly and so the question is always about upside potential but it's not really that clear for a centralized exchange token we've got 251 million dollars in market cap but a lot of this is also tokenomics the q coin kcs token has 1.4 billion the okx token so okb has 3.2 billion and the market cap doesn't necessarily have to be aligned with the usage on chain yes it's a potential opportunity as a trading vehicle it might make sense to set a trailing stop loss so with trailing stop losses i mean as the price goes up you want to adjust your stop loss and when then the price turns around you want to exit very quickly but besides that for holding this over many many years it's probably not the best thing again i believe that the whales tend to make better decisions than small retail right small retail simply just buys and holds the whales tend to trade more actively and they've got most of the money because they probably did the right trades in the past and there is some kind of a correlation of past performance to future performance because crypto is both a game of luck and skill and the whales tend to be on average more skilled than just small retail and the whales tend to sell long term now here's the thing i believe that most upside potential is in the small market cap tokens and it's especially in the meme coins. Have a look at this. In the last seven days, what performed the best? It's all meme coins and it's hundreds of percent potentially. We talked about Chill Guy early on this channel. We talked about Bully early on this channel. We also talked about the Tits token early on this channel. So feel free to follow here. Because here's the problem. Once a token rises to a certain market cap, it takes a lot of capital again to double and triple the token. And especially for meme coins that do have a lot of risk, that can easily go down by 50, 60%, you do still want to see the upside potential. And so when the market cap is already pretty high in the billions of dollars, then there is not that much upside potential, but there's still the downside potential. So the risk versus reward isn't that great. Have a look at this. This is the largest meme coins in the last week. Pretty much everything went down only dogecoin went slightly up so once a meme coin has risen to a certain level it's time to be cautious it might make sense to go into the tokens that are not in the billions but only in the tens of millions maybe hundreds of millions but the question is always how can we pick the right small meme coin right there are so many small meme coins how do we not get burned and i believe the answer to this is wallet tracking so the blockchain is 100 percent transparent and so once we've got a wallet of a certain influencer of somebody that moves markets of somebody that is a top trader of somebody that did do the right things in the past once we have those wallets we've got a very nice mechanism to filter what to buy and what to sell have a look at this so this is martini guy and he bought the moon token when it was still at 4066 so that was even before the listing on radium so that was directly on the pump.fun ecosystem platform when he bought his position went up by more than four thousand percent of course it subsequently collapsed but that's the idea of trading right you don't just want to buy and hold meme coins meme coins are a rotation game you want to be in as long as the momentum is positive and you want to exit very quickly once that turns around i have a look at this here 
Another alert by the Martini guy. He bought the Fetties token, again directly on Pump Fun. And again, a very similar development. So the purchase happened directly on the platform. Subsequently, the price went up by 1,680% and then came crashing back down. Now, what's important with buying tokens that early, with tracking other influencers, is that first of all, we have to take profit. But secondly, also, we have to be somewhat diversified. We can't bet half of our portfolio on a single bet. This is very risky. Gone. So here again, the Martini guy. He bought Chippy and that was at two zeros 22. Here are his purchases. Now it's at two zeros 16. So there are trades that don't necessarily always work out. It is a game of risk versus reward. You want to buy when the upside is still there. You don't want to buy the meme coins that are in the billions of dollars. But when going risk on like this, it's more important than with any other strategy not to lose everything, right? It's important to make small bets every now and then and then take profit when those make multiple X returns. And so that's why I made several tutorial videos on the topic on risk mitigation, on portfolio diversification, of course, also on on-chain tracking, etc. Now I've talked about him now often enough. So here is that guy. This is Martini guy. He's got 150,000 subscribers and we track 12 of his wallets. We did this through on-chain analytics. We found out some of his wallets. But well, check this out. This is Alex Becker's channel. We also track his wallets. He's got 1.5 million subscribers. Now, when he talks about a token, it puts that much attention on the token that of course the price has to rise. We've got also 12 of his wallets. We are also tracking Crypto Banter with 1.1 million subscribers. We've got 33 of their wallets. And so I really believe this is the way to get an edge in crypto. It's not just buying random tokens that are funny, that are in some kind of list of trending tokens. I think it's much more important to follow the insiders. It's to follow the early money. It's to follow the people that have more attention and that can push prices higher. I like this strategy of wallet tracking that much that I made a dedicated tutorial course on just that. So it's eight videos in total. It's how to find influencer wallets. It's how to track them. It's also how to interpret the signals that we get from the tracking. Once we have a signal, we of course also have to discuss when should we buy, when should we sell. We have to discuss our on-chain analytics. We have to compare what kind of conclusions we come to. That's why we've got our dedicated chats on the individual altcoins as well. So feel free to check it out. It's currently 125 US dollars per month. There's also a one week money back guarantee. So in case you don't like premium, in case you don't learn anything, just message me within the first seven days and I'll refund you 100 there's really zero risk for you so do i think that lcx can go higher from here yes of course it can with the general market right as crypto is currently expanding bitcoin is going up ethereum is going up then lcx can go up as well and the momentum currently is positive there is potentially still a relative outperformance of 2x that being said i don't think it's the very best long-term investment over many many years and i do think that most upside potential is currently in rather the smaller assets if you got some value out of this video, feel free to subscribe. I publish videos regularly. A like would be very much appreciated as well. It helps the channel grow. See you in the next video or see you in premium. Cheers.